Hey, this is Gary with Today for Tomorrow. And if you're like me and you've got a food forest in your yard, uh, sometimes you might wind up having a few more critters around than you want, especially, in my case, during mango season. Look, I built a food forest, I planted a food forest for me, but also to create habitat and biodiversity. So I'm okay with a few fruits, a few vegetables, you know, going missing. But when it comes to mangoes, I've got a little bit of a possessive streak. So today I'm gonna to take you out in my food forest and explain the things that I've tried uh, to humanely limit the amount of fruit that's staying away from my table and winding up in the bellies of our outdoor critters. So come on, let's go check it out. Okay, for starters, again, I don't want to uh, talk down about a brand or anything, what have you. Uh, this is an ingenious contraption. I had high, high hopes for this, for the rats. What happens is you bait the top of the, the, uh, the top basically up in here, and the rats climb up here. You also put some bait in the bucket. They climb up, they walk on here, they walk to the end and doop, it tilts, and they wind up uh, in there. And you can humanely take the bucket wherever you want, let them go. Okay, now here's the deal. For me, with rats in mango season here in South Florida, it just did not work. Now, I can't tell you why I don't have cameras on it, uh, but what I can tell you is every single morning, I would wake up and the bait would be gone. Uh, in some instances, the top would be off, sometimes not. Um, you know, could be raccoons, could be squirrels, could be two rats get in there and they jump and they, they knock the top off. I really can't tell you. I can tell you though that I never caught a single rat in it. So moving on. This is an interesting little contraption. And what you can do is you can tie to those little holes in there uh, your bait, whatever that bait is. Peanut butter wrapped in paper towel. They start tugging on it. It closes. You've got a rat and you can safely release that wherever you want. I would highly recommend this instead of that if you're dealing with rats in South Florida during mango season. Now, same thing on a bigger scale. Uh, I had initially raccoons and possums coming in to take their fruit, and I found this to be very effective. Again, same thing. Here you put your bait on the side, animal, raccoon, what have you, comes in this side, steps across there, and once again, it's trapped. So yeah, so that trap has worked very, very well for me. Raccoons, uh, possums, you just have to be careful because you know, you might get to a feral cat, somebody's pet, uh, and then you have a few options. You can either just let them go, and they'll be somewhat scared and traumatized and hopefully never come back, uh, or if you want, you can relocate them but if you do pick an area that is a wild area, uh, that has plenty of habitat, maybe a canal, some water source, hopefully not too many roads because it's the roads that kill most of our suburban wildlife. I don't know if the audio is picking it up or the video, but back in the oak tree there, that's a big problem I have is just tons and tons of squirrels because of the oak trees. And you know, hey, I like that we have habitat. And I like watching those little squirrels, they're super entertaining. But when it comes to mango season, maybe they're not my best friends. <laughs> so I'm doing what I can to just kind of, to kind of keep them out of here. I just wanted to give you a quick shot of the food forest in case you've uh, seen my earlier videos over the last two years. And you can see just how much this food forest has grown. Right now we've got sugar apples, uh, that are uh, growing, uh, bananas that are also uh, up front. I have some I'm about ready to pick. And then this mango tree, a Glen mango, has already given us fruit. And now we're in the end of this uh, Gary mango tree. And we've got some limes always popping. There's always something growing, some June plums, always something in the food forest uh, for us and the animals. Since we've had some problems with iguanas and this June plum, I'm going to try something I tried in a school food forest, and that's these little dinosaurs. 
Um, they work, it seems like they work anyway for a few days, uh, but then uh, eventually uh, the, the iguanas get kind of wise to it. So I think maybe if you move them around, uh, it might work. Anyway, worth a try. Okay, next step, or maybe the first step you take. Uh, these are pretty cool. They're very affordable. I bought a 50-pack um, from Amazon, and it was just, uh, I think I googled fruit mesh bag or fruit protection. Anyway, it's got a little drawstring. Uh, you slip it over the fruit, tie it tight, but now here's the thing. It's it's a first line of defense. Uh, what it does is it stops things from landing directly on the fruit and eating it. However, trust me on this, you give some rats an evening, they'll chew through it. Uh, you give a squirrel a chance, he'll chew through it. You give a bird a chance, he'll start pecking on it. Um, it's not foolproof. It's, it kind of keeps the honest animals honest. So what I did next, I'm going to show you out on the mango tree, is kind of taking the next step on this. So again, you can see the mesh bag here. This one's been lucky. Nobody's pecked it or chewed on it. Um, but some have not been so lucky. I'll, I'll show you. This one here was before I put the cage up. And you can see they just pecked right through and that was the end of that mango. So what I did is I constructed with this light cage plastic wire. Uh, it's basically like chicken wire. It is for chickens, I think. Uh, it's made out of plastic. And I just made little uh, barriers, little basically bigger versions of this. And they've been working really, really well. So that is success right there. As you can see, a mango fell. I don't know if it, was, it looks like it was pecked. They're usually pecked by a bird. It fell and it was contained. And I will get to enjoy that mango. Thanks to the netting in the cage. So here's that mango now out of that cage or net. Call it what you want. And you can see right here I was right. A bird did peck it and that's what they do. They come up, they peck it. And normally that knocks it off the tree. And then they have at it. In this case, one little peck. It's not going to bother me any. In about two days, I'll be eating that mango. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope uh, you were able to benefit from my trials, uh, what worked, what didn't work, and hopefully uh, either this season or next season, it will lead to more fruit, more vegetables from your food forest on your table. Remember, this is something we're doing for us. We're also doing it for the animals, so we have to kind of understand that they get to have some too. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Remember, it's the little things we do in our daily lives today that make such a big difference in all of our tomorrows.